You could say that it started in the library of a Decatur home, the NFL, and our very own Chicago Bears, then known as the Decatur Staley's. Today, a team that Forbes has valued at $1.7 billion. But for one Decatur man, it was never about the money. It was about fulfilling a dream, and now a town trying to capture history. It's on my special report. Eagle. Stadiums filled, glasses filled up, bar stools lined with football fans to watch the big event every Sunday, sometimes Super Bowl big. To the end zone touchdown! The NFL is a billion dollar industry now, but it's a league with humble beginnings. Surrounded by cornfields, factories, and through the smoky haze, a corn processor plant one man that started it all. A.E. Staley was the kind of man who, when he saw something that he wanted that was a great opportunity, he took advantage of it. Augustus Eugene Staley, founder of A.E. Staley Manufacturing Company, one of the biggest corn processors in the world, today known as Tate and Lyle. He was an innovative businessman with a love for sports. Every venture that he started, whether, whether it was personal or business, seems like everything he touched turned to gold. Or in this case, orange and blue. He started a company football team called the Decatur Staley's. But even for the man who did everything big, back in 1920, there was no foreseeing the giant impact 24 men would have on the world. Yeah, the seeds were planted here. I, I compared uh, Mr. Staley to, to a Johnny Appleseed. And he planted the seeds, and he went and he got uh, my uncle, and he got George Hallis. Mr. Staley fielded a team of factory workers. Ed Dutch Sterneman, Joyce Howe's uncle, was one of them. He said, I don't know if I want to be on this team. Uh, I've got my, my father said, get a real job. And I'd like to, you know, just get a real job. And Mr. Staley said, well, you can work in my plant. See that boiler plant and develop your skills. By day, he was processing corn. By night, picking passes. Howe's uncle coached and played for the Decatur Staley's. He eventually co-owned the team with George Hallis. George Hallis worked in the glucose department. <laughs> Thought you'd like that little bit. <laughs> From the factory to the field, players would work at the Staley plant, and then two hours a day, it's believed they would practice and play here, where Staley Field stood. Thousands would come to watch at a ticket price of just one dollar. But there's no marking, no plaque, nothing to recognize the area or the team. That you'll find in just one part of Decatur. As you drive by at 45 miles per hour. Somebody's missing the boat not to have uh, a uh, recognition because I don't think many people know this story. They say Chicago Bears, but it's quite an interesting story. And one that will finally be told in a brand new Staley Museum at the Staley Mansion set to open next year. Had it been for sale and not been renovated, I don't know that it would have happened. The historic site will celebrate the legacy of A.E. Staley, including a history of the team. Anecdote has it that the room behind me here is the library and was the place where A.E. Staley and George Hollis met on those first meetings to decide how they were going to create this football team, find these other teams to play against that then later would develop into the NFL. As this contract shows, the team moved to Chicago one year after it started in 1921, when Staley sold the team to Hallis. It would be called the Chicago Staley's for that season and then be named the Chicago Bears. Howe's father, Joe Sterneman, was the first quarterback of the 1922 Chicago Bears. Yeah, my father's the shortest one there. They're lined up by height. But it was her uncle who was a meticulous record keeper. My uncle's collection was five truckloads. It's huge. There was no place to send it. It had been in storage for over 80 years. It's not on display. It's just being kept at the Hall of Fame. In Canton, Ohio, but that Decatur connection won't be forgotten. It's a Decatur story that needs to be told and needs to be a part of our um, cultural heritage here in Decatur. A town that will always be known as the original home of the Chicago Bears. The Bears mascot is still Staley to Bear. The Staley Museum is being funded through private donations. And if you have any artifacts for the museum, you can visit its website, or we've posted a link at WANDTV.com. It's under Sight Watch. As for how, she hopes that with the team's centennial approaching, more can be done to recognize them.